all of the elements that went into the making of Christian of Judaism, Christianity, and Islam came out of Africa. And you have to distinguish between the elements and the formal organization of the religions themselves. The religions began to decline when outsiders, foreigners, took over those elements, organized them for their own political purpose, gave them a name, and began to project them to the world for their political purpose. Then the outsider created a religion, but he forgot the African substance, and the African substance was spirituality. Because if you have spirituality, you can use any one of them or none of them. Because the African spirituality encompassed the essence of all of them. The white man has religion, but he has no spirituality. Then you must study and understand the difference between Islam and Arabism something which is difficult for black people to understand. The Arab did to Islam what the white man did to Christianity. He subtracted the spirituality and made it a political instrument for his opportunism. But when it came over to the African, the African accepted the spiritual aspect of it and forgot that to the Arab it was then and still is a political game and that the spiritual aspect left him very early and that he was then and is now playing a game and that the spiritual aspect never touched him. And if you listen with me with some kind of patience, I will tell, show you exactly what I mean because if you see that it was the African who used this religion spiritually and it was the Arab who used it politically, it is the African who still uses it spiritually, and it is the Arab who still use it politically. If you look at the present day Sudan, where the Arab had declared, have declared war on African cultures, so and he not only is the, while he has declared war on African cultures, he's eating bacon, drinking scotch and patronizing European whores. He is as holy as a dog. And yet, you can go to Egypt and order scotch, bacon, or anything you want from the West, including a Western woman, and you can go to an African country that is Muslim, and if you order Scott, you might be put in jail. I am saying that Senegal, a Muslim African country, is more Muslim in its practice of the faith than Saudi Arabia. And you have African countries because Africans in general believe in the spirituality of the religion and while the Arabs practice the political aspect of the religion devoid of spirituality. And it is the African side of Islam that has used it 
for spirituality. It was the African side of Islam and the African side of Islam alone that has used it as a rallying cry for social reform and revolutionary change. Now, in a speech at the African Poetry Theater a few weeks ago, I asked the audience, could anybody name one Arab whoever who could use, who used Islam as a rallying cry for revolutionary change? A Senegalese student rose up and said, Qaddafi, which proved he don't know good, could, what Qaddafi is doing. Qaddafi is an, is an Islamic zealot who is trying to use Islam to start a new form of Islamic and Arab imperialism. He's doing a few good things to disguise his con game. Otherwise, why would he be in Chad and Niger? He's looking for minerals. He's looking for resources. And he's backing those African countries that he can Islamize. And why would he build a mosque in Ghana? And when Ghana wanted some money for a sewage system, he would refuse. You see the politics, but you don't see the spirit. While teaching and representing a religion called Islam to you, the first important thing to do is to answer the question, what is Islam? Who is the author? Who are the prophets and people? Such questions could be answered in a few words, or one could make books out of, out of the answers. Briefly, Islam means entire submission to the will of to the will of Allah. It is moreover a significant name. Its primary significance is the making of peace, and the idea of peace is the dominant idea in Islam. The author of Islam is Allah. We just cannot imagine God being the author of any other religion but one of peace. Since peace is the very nature of Allah and peace he seeks for his people and peace is the nature of the righteous. Most, most surely Islam is the religion of peace. It is the religion offered to the people to bring about peace of mind and, and contentment after the destroyers of peace with falsehoods have been destroyed. The entire creation of Allah is of peace, not including the devils who are not the creation of Allah, but a race created by an enemy, Yaqub of Allah. Yaqub rebelled against Allah and the righteous people and was cast out of the homes of the righteous into the worst part of the planet to live their way of life until they fixed the day, until they fixed day of their doom. These enemies of Allah are known at the present as the white race or European race, who are the sole people responsible for misleading nine tenths of the total population of, of the black nations. What is Islam? It can be answered in one word, righteousness. Briefly, it is the religion of Allah and his prophets. Islam is as old as Allah himself and is the religion of which Moses, Jesus and Muhammad Oh, excuse me, is the religion of which Allah is the author. Islam is the religion of Adam, Noah, Moses, Jesus, and Muhammad. Islam is the religion of entire submission to the will of Allah. Islam is the religion which the Holy Quran teaches. Allah says, this day I have perfected for you your religion, completed my favor on you and chosen you for Islam as a religion. And that's chapter 5-3 in the Quran. Allah also says in another chapter of the Holy Quran, surely the true religion with Allah is Islam. And that's chapter 318. The significance of the name Islam is peace, the true religion. It is a religion of eternal peace. We cannot imagine Allah offering to us a religion other than one of peace. A religion of peace coming to the righteous after the destruction of the wicked is also mentioned in several, in several places in the Bible. The Lord will bless his people with, with peace. And that's Psalms 29, 11. Also, he will speak peace unto his people and 
to his saints. And that's Psalms 35, 8. And the Lord of peace gives you, and the Lord of peace gives you peace always. And that's Thessalonians 3, 16. Islam is the religion referred to in the above mentioned biblical verses. It is the only religion that gives the believer a peace of mind and contentment. It removes grief and fear at once on believing. Yea, whoever submits himself entirely to Allah and he is the doer of, of good to others, he has the reward from his Lord and there is no fear for him, nor shall he grieve. Our people, the so-called American Negroes, will love Islam when they learn more of it, for it is the religion of their fathers, and it is the last of the three great religions on earth. The other two, Buddhism and Christianity, cannot give us a lasting peace. We have tried them for our to our disappointment. Christianity is one of the most perfect black slave-making religions on our planet. It has completely killed the so-called Negroes' mentality. Now, it takes Allah himself to revive and restore our people back into their own. Though I am his messenger and Allah can use my life as he pleases for him, these, they are my people and many while I am only one. Islam will give them the heaven while they live. Islam has more to offer than the white controlled Christianity. Islam is universal. The true believers of Islam are equal in number to the total population of whites on our planet. And he states that's 400 million. By nature, all members of the black nation are Muslims whose, whose numbers are, is over the 1 billion mark. We must have Islam as our religion to restore our peace after suffering under the slavery, the persecutors, and the grief of wars for 6,000 years. The so-called Negroes of America who have never known the way of peace who have never had love or mercy shown to them today have Allah. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back to On the Shoulders of Giants. I am Joseph Ward, and we are continuing our reading and review of Elijah Muhammad's book, Message to the Black Man in America. And we are on the third chapter, the third section of the book, Islam. What is Islam? Um, so I started the started this off with a clip from Dr. John Henry Clark because I wanted history, context, and balance within this video. Yes, I am reviewing the book and I want us to get all the meat off the bones from this book, but I also want to make sure that we have balance and context and real historical context as well. And so um, having the balance of Dr. John Henry Clark and Elijah Muhammad, I, I believe the message can get across. So the overall message from this video um is islam is a religion that black people can choose now the message that elijah muhammad is giving is islam is the religion that black people should choose now i coupled it with dr john henry clark also because um i remember watching a video in the past and it could be in that exact video. So that whole video is like an hour long. So I don't remember if it's exactly in this specific video. But I remember him talking about Islam being a better choice of religion for black people than Christianity. And so that's why I wanted to have some Dr. John Henry Clark context on that. And so I thought about that for a while, for years, because I, I, I remember watching that video maybe over 10 years ago. And I never forgot that. I always thought about that, even though it never necessarily spurred me to pick a specific religion. I never thought I never forgot. Excuse me. I never forgot what he said. I thought about it often. I never forgot what Dr. John Henry Clark said. And I always wondered why he believed that Islam would be a better religion for black people in America than Christianity. And so I started looking further into Islam and seeing how true Islam is practiced. And once I learned how true Islam is practiced, I understood what Dr. Clark was saying. Now, context, Orthodox Islam or true Islam or it's different from what the nation of Islam is teaching. It's not the exact same. It's a it's different type of ideologies that come with it and then we can see what we we can we can tell from what we're reading in this book but what i do agree with elijah muhammad is i can i can understand 
why Islam would serve black people better. And I can understand why it would be a valiant push to get black people to get rid of Christianity, to get rid of what your white slave masters have given you. Now, true Islam, not Arabist, not the Islam that's influenced by the, by the Arab slave masters, or even Christianity that's not influenced by the white slave masters. And we got to remember, that's why I use Dr. John Henry Clark again, getting to the, 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 the foundation of the religions, the spirituality of the religions. The foundation is African. When it really comes down to it, the foundation is African, but the spiritual aspects of these religions, because we have examples of black people, both who were Islamic and Christian, who have fought to free our people from the shackles of slavery and oppression. So it's not necessarily the religion, but it's the individual behind or the individual who is the who's within the religion. So as we go through this chapter, because Elijah Muhammad is giving us his thoughts on why we should choose Islam. So as we go through this chapter, I want us to go through this chapter with an open mind, but also with context to understand the history of Islam, the history of Christianity. And if you don't know it, I suggest that's something you go look up. Go study the actual history. We're not talking about the, the biblical history or the Quran history. We're talking actual history of it. Because actual history, the Crusades. Go look up the Crusades. The Crusades were year-long wars long long wars long wars christians jews and muslims fighting for land power wealth and resources so we're not on this channel we're not going to act like any of these religions are clean they're not but if we're talking about what could be a better choice for black people well we're going to explore further why islam and i don't really disagree why true islam is a good choice but I do also agree that true Christianity could be, or if you get back to the Orthodox way that was started in Africa, it could be, but why true Islam could be a viable option for black Americans to choose, especially if you want to choose a religious option that's opposite of what your white slave masters, your European slave masters gave you. So let's pick back up on the meaning of Islam, page 71. Entire submission to the will of Allah, the religion of Allah and his prophets and the natural religion of the righteous, which will dominate all other religions. Surely the true religion of Allah is Islam. Can we say this of other religions? And so, you know, he's asking the question because in his mind and his belief, Islam is the true religion of God, the way he sees God, the way he experiences God, the way he understands God. He believes Islam is the true religion and any other religion that you follow is the false religion. Well, I mean, everybody in their religion think that. Now, I do think it's kind of funny that Buddhism caught strays in this because I never I never really heard anybody say that Buddhism was one of the major world religions. Because when you know, when I was reading the chat and we talked about three major religions, I was I was expecting him to say Christianity. Islam and Judaism, but he threw Buddhism in there. Buddhism caught some strays. So I would, I wish I could, could ask him about his thoughts on Buddhism. So that's interesting though. Islam means salvation to each and everyone who believes in it. Through the American so-called Negroes, it is the master key which opens wide every door locked against them. The door of the universal friendship with the creator and his, cre and his creatures swings wide open to you and the doors of freedom, justice and equality. All the believers of Islam are the brothers of the others, unlike Christian, unlike Christianity, where the white Christians are too proud to make the black people their equal. Since the American so-called Negroes never been recognized by white Protestant Christianity as equal members, they flock to the Catholic church to join it, running from a greater snake running from a garter snake to a rattlesnake. The garter snake runs from them. The rattlesnake swallows them. They know nothing of the true religion of God and care very little because their minds are to, are to be wherever the white man's minds are. 
Christianity has no power for the Negroes against their enemies. Islam is a powerful religion. If the so-called Negroes of the South or America in general would, ex would accept Allah and his religion, Islam, their dreaded fear of the white man's brutality and murder would be over. Allah will defend the believers of Islam. The believers are united against their enemies. For every Islamic believing so-called Negro in America, there are a hundred Muslim brothers on his or her side. This means if the whole 17 million so-called Negroes were believers in Islam, the world would be 17 million of their people with them as brothers and sisters. Allah's finding of the lost members of the black nation is more valuable in this eyes than the whole world of mankind, and even they are very valuable in the eyes of any Asiatic Muslim. The findings of the so-called Negroes by Allah means the end of the present world and the beginning of a new world and the guidance of Allah. So, being able to being able to fully commit, if you're going to choose Islam, are you going to truly choose Islam? Are you going to truly submit to the 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 values and the principles that come with Islam. Because if you are, you are submitting to peace. But let's not be short-sighted and let's not be delusional about humans. Just because a human has align themselves with a, a spiritual path or a religious path doesn't mean that human is going to follow that to the T. And let's not like, act like every Muslim. First of all, every Muslim is not black and every Muslim does not follow Islam to the T. We have the history in America to show that. We have the history in the world to show that. The Arab slave trade. So once again, I keep mentioning the Arab slave trade because the transatlantic slave trade is mentioned and we don't need to forget about either one the arabs have enslaved the african people longer than the europeans right arabs their faith was islam the europeans their faith was christianity as dr clark said in the clip remember they all every religion every religion every religion on earth has been used for political gain by human beings. It is not the religion that is wrong. It's the human beings who follow the religion who do wrong. So let's not get it mistaken. Islam ain't did nothing bad to nobody. It's the followers or the so-called followers of Islam who have done bad things. But if you follow the actual principles, you will become a better person. If you follow the actual principles of Islam, you will become a better person. The number one principle of Islam is a belief in Allah, the belief in a power higher than man. Although many, although man may be ignorant of just who it is who has such supreme power, it can be traced back to the beginning of the civilization of the human race and the beginning of the writing of history. Regardless of tribes and, and national gods, there still exists the belief in a greater God that was more powerful than their national gods or those who were molded by their own hands out of, out of play, wood, iron, silver, gold, and stone. Some of those gods were the leaders of their tribes or people. There were fire gods and birds, animals, snakes, and beasts, and even trees were worshiped as God. And so he's getting at the one of the main principles of Islam he's saying is the belief in a higher power, the belief in a God, the belief in the creator, the belief in the progenitor of all life. So starting with the belief in God, a belief in Allah, if you're going to be a true follower of Islam, understanding that everything emanates from Allah. And you must, you know, follow the principles, follow the values, follow the steps to, to truly become the greatest version of yourself and to rise spiritually. So, um, and I, I do understand one of the things that he's saying is he, like, like, like me and many of us have witnessed predominantly Christian 
environments and people who claim to be the holiest of thou, the Bible thumpers, are usually the worst quality people. We've all experienced Bible thumpers who are like the worst quality people ever. They like the worst human beings ever, but they're the Bible thumpers. So predominantly, that's what we've seen. Predominantly, that's what we're used to. Predominantly, we have those examples. Now, I remember having a conversation with my father years ago. And we were talking about Islam and, and followers of Islam. And he told me, paraphrasing, that, you know, the same, the same way you see people who are Bible thumpers, who don't really follow the values and the principles of Christianity, you got that with Islam too. Don't, don't be blinded by the religion. Evaluate the qualities of the individual. Let me say that again. Don't be blinded by the religion or the label. Evaluate the qualities of the individual. But if you actually, once again, if you're going to, whatever religion you choose to follow, whatever one you choose to follow, if you truly follow the principles of the book rather than the principles that are given to you by man, I'm just saying, I'm just saying. But also, if you, if you couple that with critical thinking. Don't be a blind follower. Blind faith has gotten us nowhere. Don't be a blind follower. If you're going to follow the religion, follow it. But you still have the ability to critically think. Use it. So, a Muslim is one who believes in one God. It is forbidden by Allah for us to believe in, in or serve anyone other than himself as a God. He warns us not to step up and equal, to not to step up and equal with him as he was the one in the beginning from whom everything had its beginning and will be the one God from which everyone will end. He is independent, having no need for anyone's help. But on the other hand, upon him, we all depend. It is the highest of ignorance for us to choose a God or attempt to make something as equal to him. Foolish people all over the earth will be born. Excuse me. Excuse, foolish people all over the earth have been for the past 6,000 years and still are trying to make an equal to Allah. He has no beginning, nor there, nor is there any end to him. Oh, how foolish man can you make an equal for such a one? How foolish we make ourselves serving and worshiping gods other than the one God, Allah. The foolish become rich and highly educated in their way and not in the way of Allah and then begin making and worshiping gods of their own, the work of their own hands. Then comes the end of them as it is of today. It is, it is the fundamental principle of the religion of Islam to believe in Allah, the one God according to the belief, the teaching and preaching of the prophets of Allah is of one God. Noah, Abraham, Moses, and Jesus all believed in one God. The Christians claim a belief in the above named prophets. Then how do they make Jesus the equal of Allah? The Bible says, and God spoke all these words saying, I am the Lord thy God. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness or anything that is in the heavens above that is or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them nor serve them for I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God. Well, you know, they said that in the Bible. Too, so both Jews and Christians are guilty of setting up rivals to Allah. There you go. Adam and Eve accepted the guidance of the serpent instead of that of Allah. They made a golden calf and took it for their God and bowed down to it. This was, and so we know the Adam and Eve and the golden calf were not in the same thing. So Adam and Eve were, you know, Genesis 3, 6, and the story of the golden calf was in Exodus 32, 4. 
This was the work of their own hands to guide them and fight their ways. The Christians have made imaginary pictures and statues of wood, silver, and gold, calling them pictures and statues of God. They bow down to the pictures and statues alleged to be of Jesus, his mother, and his disciples as though they see and hear them. They, the Christians, claim to son, claim sonship to Allah and take the son to be the equal of the father, though they say that they killed the son. Today they take the weapons of war for their God and put their trust in the work of their own hands. So going in more to the submission of one to God, if you're going to be a follower of Islam. But the idea of basically saying, if you're going to just overall, like for religion period, Christian or Islam, or even, even put the Buddhist in there. If, if you're going to believe, believe. Don't be the person that had making up your own rules when you know it's a whole book of rules and principles and things that you're supposed to follow. But that's how we got all these different denominations as well. Within the, the various religions, you got different denominations, different sects within Islam, different denominations, different sects within Christianity, because that's when the politics came in. You got to understand in, in the real world, in the real history of humanity, politics tainted every religion on earth. I'm going to say that again. In the real world. In real history, politics tainted every religion on earth. No religion was safe. They were all tainted by the politics. So with that being said, if you're going to follow a religion, follow the religion, follow the words, don't follow man. Now, no, one critique I will have is, um, and this, Elijah Muhammad's, idea of God is while it's far Muhammad. So in that regard, he is following a man. Now, in the beginning of the book, he did say that God is man. So in his mind, in his view and stuff, he's not wrong because he views far Muhammad as the second coming of Jesus. So, you know, I want to make sure that context is there now. Islam teaches an eternal heaven for the righteous, for hell is not eternal. These heaven and hell are not necessary places, but conditions. Islam teaches an eternal heaven for the righteous, for hell is not eternal. These heaven and hell are not necessary places, but conditions. Conditions that we either create for, for ourselves or we allow others to have the power over us to create them for us. So remember that heaven and hell are not real places. Heaven and hell are conditions, states of mind, states of being. Some of us experience heaven every day. Some of us experience hell every day. Depends on how you choose to live your life. Islam teaches that if a brother kills a brother, the murderer must be killed or anyone that murders a, a Muslim. The Christians go to war against each other daily. Muslims do that as well. Killing their own brothers and sisters. The righteous must be rid of such people. Make Islam to overcome all other religions, whether the disbelievers like it or not. Our God is one God. Can one God believe? Can one God believe in more than one religion and be true to himself and others? If the other religions were true religions, surely Allah would not send an apostle to overcome them with another religion. It is other than Allah's religion that they seek to follow and to submit whoever is in the heavens and earth willingly or unwillingly. We will bear witness to the truth that everything of Allah's creation obeys him regardless of size or numbers. But the proud wicked man of sin refuses to submit and goes about teaching ignorant people not to believe in Allah and his, re and his religion, Islam. The true religion of Allah is Islam. The emblem of Islam represents the sun, moon, and stars. The meaning is freedom. The sun, justice, the stars, and equality, the moon. No other nation's religion has the sun, moon, and stars as its emblem. No religion is worthwhile of, of its roots are not found worthwhile of its if its roots are not found in the universal order of things no nation can use the sun moon and stars to represent the government or religion
but the nation that owns it, the nation of Islam. So he's going more and more and more giving you his thoughts on Islam, why you think black people should choose Islam, his views on God, his views on the connection between God and Islam, and people, people following other religions. Because he says, can one God believe in more than one religion and be true to himself and others? No. Well, why would a God be believing in the religion? A God wouldn't have a need to believe in the religion. But uh, that God, if that, but I mean, just using critical thinking, though. If that God has rival gods, is that God the one true God? But it's all perception and, and belief, though, too, right? Because I don't believe that multiple gods exist. I believe that different people have different ideologies of, of the one God. And I don't try to argue with people on how they view God. But in my mind, there are no multiple gods. There's one God. There's one force. It's one God force out there. And people view it differently. They're cultures. You know, the, their way of life, their way of living. Somebody, I don't expect somebody on the other side of the world to view God the same way I do. I mean, we have to be realistic about it. Customs, cultures, all those things matter. Traditions, all those things matter. All those things go into how a people view themselves and view God and view themselves in relation to God and in relation to the universe and the earth. Somebody in the rainforest in South America will view God vastly different from somebody in the in the Himalayas or somebody in the plains of Mongolia or somebody in the swamps of Louisiana. Conditioning goes into it as well. Remember, African people are Christians and Muslims because of the spread of the religions, both religions by the swords. Both religions were spread, even Judaism was spread by the swords. Let's not forget. Now, going back to which religion would be the most viable for black people to follow. I'm not, I don't disagree that Islam is a very, very, very good religion for black people to follow. If you follow it truly, if you don't follow the dogma of man, if you get to the essence of the religion. But I don't totally disagree with that with Christianity as well, especially if we get back to the orthodox version of Christianity, not necessarily the version that was given to us by the white men, but also we can't take the, the politicized version of Islam as well. Prayer is at sunrise, noon, mid afternoon, sundown, and before resting. Our awakening during the night, another prayer is made. On awakening during the night, another prayer is made. In fact, two prayers should be said during the night, making a total of seven prayers a day. There is no worship of a Sunday or Sabbath day in Islam. All the days are worship days. The Muslims wash and clean all exposed parts of their bodies before prayer early, before before prayer early at the gray, at the gray of dawn of day. Basically, they they wash before they pray early in the morning. And late at night, they watch before they pray. See, that creates discipline. Praying five to seven times a day, make sure you have to clean yourself before you pray five to seven times a day. That creates healthy habits and discipline. Got no problem with that. Got no problem with that at all. When we as a people should begin setting our faces upright to the religion in the right state, and stop believing in the slave master slavery religious teachings, which are not in the right state, then we will be successful, successful and the world will respect us. We do got to throw off the white man's mindset. We do got to throw off this white man's mindset. But but once again, like I said last week and maybe the week before, you can't replace one slave master's mindset with another slave master's mindset. So. Be careful about where you're getting your information from, especially your religious information from. Think about it. Do it look right, feel right, sound right? If it don't, it might not be right. But also, 
you don't have to follow a religion. You don't have to follow a religion to be free. You don't have to follow a religion to liberate ourselves. We don't have to do that. We have to come together. We have to have a code of conduct and come together. But it doesn't have to be a religion. But we have to have a code of conduct and unite. If we want to, if we want any type of liberation, those two things have to happen. You have to come together and you have to be united under a code of conduct. But you don't have to choose a religion to free ourselves from white supremacy. Now, what Islam is Islam maybe a better option for us to free ourselves from white supremacy? Yeah. But we have enough history to show that converting to Islam is not going to free us solely. You still have to unite under a code of conduct. Can't get past uniting under a code of conduct. Can't get past that. So the spiritual meaning of our emblem, the crescent, is freedom, justice, and equality. Not that we say one thing and do otherwise. A Muslim tries to carry into practice what he preaches. Not so the Christians. Both, both. You have people in both who don't practice what they preach. They say do not. They say and do not. But after all, the religion, the religious emblem, the cross, is the meaning and its meanings compare the nature of the so-called Christians. By nature, they are murderers. By nature, they love to make slaves of others. By nature, they are haters of the black nation, which loves freedom, justice, and equality. It looks strange to see people accepting the cross as a sign of good religion. Now, that I do not disagree with, but he's talking about the white Christians. Now, the white Christians have used it to terrorize black people and use the... You, because the in, in reality... His, historically, in reality, historically, uh, the cross was a Roman. It was, it was a Roman tool of crucifixion. Like it wasn't. They, they didn't use that specifically for Jesus Christ. Like that's how Romans executed criminals. They put them on crosses or sticks or, or poles and things. And that was for everybody. So it was a Roman crucifixion object. It wasn't like something that had to. That was used specifically for Christ. But the cross was then used as a symbol for Christianity, even though you ain't supposed to have no graven images. So, yeah. But, you know, the Arabism, like Dr. Clark, that, like Dr. Clark said, the Arabism of Islam it's the same as the Europeanization of Christianity. So just like we have Christians who use, or Europeans who use Christianity to enslave African people, you had Arabs who use Islam to enslave African people. No religion is clean, no religion is safe. But in relation to what Elijah Muhammad is talking about, he's talking specifically about being able to free ourselves from this specific religion of Christianity that has us enslaved here in, in America, choosing something other than the American Europeanized Christianity that has been given to us, thinking outside of that box to free ourselves. Now, once again, we do have examples of black people who've left the Christian religion for Islam or specifically the nation of Islam, but our overall outcome is no different than what the Christians have given us. The Ten Commandments, which Moses gave to them, the white race has never been practiced by them or those whom they teach. They, the white race, are condemned by Jesus as not obeying. Why should we be looking and begging for that which is good, freedom, justice, and equality? Islam is that right religion, which by nature they cannot give us. According to the Holy Quran, one of the greatest teachings of brotherhood is laid down by us, by the Prophet Muhammad in these words. A Muslim is not a Muslim until he loves his brother what he loves for himself. The old Christian religion has been the white man's whip to lash the black man ever since he was organized. My people here in America are fast awakening to the slavery teachings of Christianity, to dislike 
to the dislike of their enemies. And I don't blame them. And I don't blame them in one bit. Because Christianity specifically has been used to enslave black people in America. So that does has to be looked at. But Islam has been used to enslave black people in Africa. So Islam comes after everything else fails. Its significance is the making of peace. The Muslims greatest, the Muslims greetings to each other is peace. What better religion could we desire after being divided and made enemies of each other? Do not tell us that you have the unity and peace in the white man's in the white race's religion called Christianity. The white race does not like Islam because it is truth and entire submission to the will of Allah. And this is against their nature. They cannot live the life of freedom, justice, and equality, not even among themselves. Many of you saying that old song, give me that old time religion. Well, Islam is the old time religion. It is as old as God himself. And God is the author of Islam. Islam was not invented as is the case of Christianity and other religions. Islam came with Allah and the universe. In the Holy Quran, it says, the day I have perfected perfected for you your religion and com and completion and completed my favor on you and have chosen you islam as a religion now historical context we know islam came about in the seventh century a.d so remember elijah muhammad's attempt here is to show you that christianity is not a viable religion for black people in America to, as far as first gaining freedom and gaining power. So he's saying Islam is a better religion. And he's giving us examples or alluding to examples of how the white people use Islam as a tool for enslavement against us here in here on American soil and how Christianity has been used to keep us docile. And we've played into it and and we love being Christians. We love Jesus. Black people love Jesus. Black people really love Jesus. Black people may love Jesus more than freedom. But black people out religion, everybody, no matter what the religion is, whether it's Islam, Christianity, Judaism, uh, Buddhism, Taoism, whatever. We out religion, everybody in religion. So that's not just a Christian thing. That's a black people thing. But remember, understand the history of both religions understand the history of both christianity specifically was used to enslave us here that's what he's getting at that we need to get away from and throw off of the so-called american negroes have been so gravely deceived by the white man's christianity and bible that they doubt anything that does not have the white man's approval which is true which is dead true dead seriously true again the time has arrived for a change. The time is universal. And the great problem now is to awaken the American so-called Negroes. The so-called Negroes are made to believe that all religions other than the Christian religions are false and idol worship, while Christian worship idol gods in their churches and religious literature. They bow in reverence to statues and imagery pictures of God and, the, and, and imaginary pictures of God the angels, the prophets, and the disciples as if they could speak. Worst of all, the pictures and statues are not of God, his angels, the prophets, or the disciples of Jesus. Therefore, they are false worshipers and ignorant enough to love the falsehood. Isaiah and Ezekiel have well described them. The Christian believers who claim to believe in, in one God should not the divine supreme being destroy those who serve and worship gods other than he? Allah does not approve of you and me worshiping his angels and prophets as equal. It is a disgrace. So he's getting at the way Christians look at the hierarchy of the angels, disciples, and all of these people. He's saying this wrong. You're either going to see the God or it ain't. Ain't no in between. It's either the God or a saint. And um, now, if you do look at Islam a lot, uh, the people who truly practice it, they they have no graven images. They follow like they're supposed to, like strict Muslims who really follow it. I've met some, and I and I know a lot of people who are 
followers of Islam who don't follow the principles of Islam like that. So I've been able to see to see both. Of course, because we're in the Bible Belt, I see more Christians, but I've been able to see both. I met basically I've been able to see people in all religious faiths who do what they want to do. So if you're going to follow, follow it the right way. Again, the principles of belief in Islam are one God, his prophets, his scriptures, his judgment, his resurrection of the mentally dead. The main principles of action in Islam, keeping up prayer, spending in cause, spending in the cause of truth, fasting, especially during the month of Ramadan, pilgrimage to Mecca, speaking the truth regardless of whom or what, being clean internally, loving your brother believers, loving your brother believers as yourself, doing good to all, killing no one whom Allah has ordered not to be killed, setting at liberty the captured believer, worshiping no God but Allah, and fearing no one but Allah. These are the teachings of the prophets. So now, interpretation in that too, because like he said, killing someone that uh, only who, killing no one whom Allah has not ordered to be killed. That can be left up to the interpretation. That can be definitely left up to interpretation. So that can be a bit sketchy. Can be, depending on the depending on the individual. We got to remember these religions ain't did nothing to nobody. It's the individuals who practice them. It's the humans, not the religions. So it does not take a wise man to see the necessity of a new order or a new world, since the old one has fulfilled its purpose. Let the Christian preachers and scientists ponder over the above prophecy of their Bible. If the time comes when Allah will make all things new, will the Christians as we see them today be in that which Allah will make new? When should we expect Allah to make all things new? After the destruction of the wicked, their kind and world, just, just when should the end of the old world be? The exact day is known only to Allah but many think that they know the year. But we all know that 1914 was the end of 6,000 years. And that has given to the old world of the devils to rule. A religion used by the devils to convert people cannot be accepted by Allah, especially when it did not come from him. More than anyone else, those who worship his image, the so-called Negroes, are guilty of loving the white race and all the race stands for. No one can find the pictures of the white people on the walls Excuse me. One can find the pictures of white people on the walls, mantel shelves, dresses and tables of their homes. And that is true. Especially old black folk home. They had white people, white Jesus, white prophets, white angels, white everything all over their homes. Some carry them into the some carry them on their person. The So-called Negroes go to church and bow down to their statues under the name of Jesus and Mary and some under the name of Jesus, the disciples, which are only the images of the white race the arch deceiver. They even worship the white man's names, which will not exist among the people of the new world, for they are not the names of God. So-called Negroes would greatly benefit themselves if they would seek their place in that which Allah makes new by giving them the great deceiver, his religion, Christianity, churches and names, and accept the religion of their righteous nation. Islam is Islam a name of their God, which is unlimited in the eyes of any white person. So, you know, it's not only the, once again, it's not the religion, it's, it's the way we practice the religions that has not um, been beneficial to us. We have to take a deep look at that. The church ain't what it used to be. The church ain't what it used to be. Politics and economics or politics and money made a lot of church people choose evil the politics and money has also let, made a lot of islamic people choose evil, choose evil there is no end to the black nation the nation will live forever the so-called negroes do not know it and their slave masters know that they do not know therefore they have the so-called negroes deceived 100 percent. it is really pitiful to see how the poor black preachers are blinded and changed by the slave masters hand and foot 
They could not speak or agree with truth, even if they wanted to. Come to me, brother, brother preachers, and believe in Allah, the true God and the true religion, Islam. See for yourselves for such from free yourselves from such chained slavery. So these are things that it, Islam dignifies. Why do I stress the religion of Islam for my people, the so-called American Negroes? First, the most important, Islam is actually our religion by nature. It is the religion of Allah, not a European organized white man's religion. Second, it is the original, the only religion of Allah and his prophets. It is the only religion that will save the lives of my people and give them divine protection against our enemies. Third, it dignifies the black man that gives us the desire to be clean internally and externally for the first time to have a sense of dignity. Fourth, it removes fear and makes one fearless. It educates us to the knowledge of God and the devil, which is so necessary for my people. Fifth, it makes us to know and love one another as never before. Sixth, it destroys superstition and removes the veil of falsehood. It heals both physical and spiritual ills by teaching what to eat, when to eat, what to think, how to act. Seventh, it is the only religion that has the divine power to unite us and save us from the destructions of the war of Armageddon, which is now. It is also the only religion in which the believer is really divinely protected. It is the only religion that will serve the great holy war or the final war between Allah and the devil. And that is where I end my reading, which is page 85. So this chapter, Islam, what is Islam, goes from pages 68 to pages 85. Overall, Elijah Muhammad is painting a picture of why black people should choose Islam over Christianity. Now, he did he did only talk about the ills of Christianity and not the ills of Islam, but I get it. He's selling Islam. Right. So. Understand how we got here. Understand what was used to keep us here. Christianity. But also understand the history of it. Look, learn the history of religion. Study the history of the world. Study the history of the religions. That's something I did for a while. I took a, a history of religion class. I studied religion, studied the history of religions and stuff on my own. Because I didn't just want it from the religious perspective. I wanted it from the historical perspective as well. And so for me, in my opinion, that gave me a good view of what Islam was, what Christianity was, what Judaism was, Buddhism, all the other religions, being able to see them from a historical context and a historical plane. So overall, once again, overall, I do think if we if we are comparing the religions side by side, we're comparing Islam and Christianity, and we're looking at them, evaluating these two and see which one, if black people right now had to choose between Christianity and Islam, which one would we choose to better help us free ourselves from Islam? I mean, free ourselves from, from white supremacy. Islam may offer, I do believe Islam will offer, uh, uh, offer us more. But I also understand, once again, it's not the religion itself it's the mind state of the people within the religion. It's the it's the practitioners of it. Because we have examples of black people. Throughout the world, where the Christian and Muslim who were enslaved through the religions and were able to liberate people through the religions. Or they were followers of the religion and they were enslaving people or they were followers of the religion and they were liberating people so christianity hasn't done anything to people islam hasn't done anything to people it's the followers that's how islam was politicized that's how christianity was politicized that's how islam was became uh you know, under the, the Arabic influence and how Christianity come under the European influence. Looking at these things from a realistic standpoint will really, 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 really help. But I get 
what Elijah Muhammad is saying, though. The, the, the main point is get rid of everything your slave master has given you. And I don't disagree with that. Get rid of everything your slave master has given you because everything your slave master has given you will only benefit your slave master and never benefit you. So that I don't disagree with. Now, overall, I don't believe you have to choose a religion. Once again, I don't believe you have to choose a religion to liberate yourself. But I do think you have to unite under a code of conduct if you want to liberate yourself. That's the most important thing, uniting under a code of conduct. Now, if that code of conduct is a religion, that's cool, but we all know how that goes. We, we, got, it, we got enough examples of that and see how that don't really work for us, no matter what the religion is. But overall, like I said in the first video of reading this book, it is not my intent to encourage anybody to go toward or away from a religion. I'm going to read the information and I'm going to give my review of it based off the information that I know, based off of my understanding. Do I expect people to disagree with me? Yeah. Do I expect people to agree with me? Yes. But that's the whole purpose of the review. Hey, and, you know, if you purchase your copy, you know, you can read it for yourself and see what you come up with. But it's, it is what it is. This, this is how... Elijah Muhammad sees it, and this is how I see it. So here we go. Link is in the description to support. Link is in the description to get your copy of the book. Um, let's continue to learn. Let's continue to think. Free thinking, free thinking, free thinking, thinking for yourself, critical thinking. Not letting someone shape your thoughts. Think for yourself. If you can't think for yourself, I don't know what to tell you. You're going to be a slave for the rest of your life if you never learn to think for yourself. So Remember, um, pages, this was pages 68 to 85 and the next chapter, the Bible and Holy Quran. It goes from. So the Bible and Holy Quran goes from pages 86 to pages 99. So that's what we read next time for the next video. Pages 86 to page 99, the Bible and the Holy Quran. So love you all. Make sure y'all catch the next video coming up.